2. Dragons in the Medieval Age 2.1 The Symbology of Dragons in the Middle Ages The Medieval Age marked an important turning point in the understanding and representation of dracoid creatures. No longer just powerful symbols of nature and the afterlife, dragons became bearers of deep symbolic and moralistic meanings. During this period, dragons were commonly associated with the personification of evil, representing antagonism towards Christian morality and faith. Dragons, with their frightening power and terrifying appearance, thus became symbols of the devil, an entity to be fought and defeated. Iconographic representations of the time, such as those found in churches and manuscripts, often depicted the saints fighting these monsters, symbolizing the victory of faith over temptation and sin. However, not all dragons were depicted as evil forces. In some stories, the dragon was a guardian, protecting treasures or holy places, becoming an obstacle to be overcome, a challenge to prove the valor of the knight or saint. These dragons were symbols of trials and tribulations, personifications of obstacles to be overcome to achieve salvation or triumph. The duality of the dragon as a symbol of evil and as a guardian of obstacles and trials is representative of the medieval worldview marked by moral and spiritual conflicts and the constant search for redemption and triumph over evil. This symbolism of the dragon is reflected in the stories and legends of the time, shaping the image of the dragon in the collective imagination. As we continue our journey through the medieval era, we will focus on the particular places where dragons were depicted. The next section will focus on medieval bestiaries, books that described and illustrated a variety of creatures, including dragons. These bestiaries were not just catalogues of animals, they were instruments of moral teaching, and the dragon, with its strong symbolism, occupied a special role. And so, we will continue to follow the trail of dragons, exploring their presence and significance in the pages of these ancient manuscripts. 2.2 Dragons in the Medieval Bestiary Medieval bestiaries were invaluable sources of wisdom, cataloging and interpreting not only earthly creatures, but also fantastic ones, including dragons. These tomes, often beautifully illustrated, served as guides to Christian morality, using the creatures present as metaphors for ethical and spiritual concepts. In these works, the dragon was traditionally associated with dark forces and sin. With its terrifying appearance and formidable power, it embodied temptation and deception, frequently depicting the devil himself. Its unique attributes, its breath of fire, its ability to fly and its indestructible scales, were often used to emphasize the cunning and danger of sinful temptation. Yet, in some bestiaries, dragons were not only negative symbols. Some were described as guardians of precious treasures or sacred places depicting obstacles that had to be overcome to attain glory or holiness. In such cases, the dragon symbolized the trials that Christians had to face in their spiritual life. The struggle against the dragon thus became a metaphor for the struggle against one's own weaknesses and temptations, and its defeat represented the victory of virtue over sin. Besides the literal representation, dragons and bestiaries were also used to illustrate abstract concepts. For example, a dragon wrapping its tail around an elephant, causing it to fall, was a common image used to symbolize man's fall into sin. The importance of dragons in medieval bestiaries was not limited to their literal presence, through their depictions, they helped shape the collective imagination, making complex moral and theological lessons more accessible and engaging to people of the time. As we continue our journey through the medieval age, we will move from the science of bestiaries to Arthurian fiction where dragons play a crucial role. In these stories, the dragon is not only a symbol of temptation or an obstacle to be overcome, but also a sign of sovereignty and power, a prophet of the fate of the kingdom and a formidable adversary for knights. Let us prepare to explore how these fantastical creatures intertwine with the destiny of the legendary King Arthur and his knights. 2.3 Dragons in Arthurian Stories In the Arthurian tradition, the figure of the dragon plays a significant role as a sign of royal power and an omen of future events. The interwoven plots of these tales offer multiple interpretations of the dragon, reflecting the complexity of medieval society and spirituality. A notable example is the red dragon and the white dragon in Merlin's tale. 
These two dragons, representing the battle between the Britons, the Red Dragon, and the Saxons, the White Dragon, are seen by Merlin in a prophetic vision. The fight between the two dragons symbolizes the conflict between two nations and the fate of the kingdom. These dragons not only embody the forces at play in Arthur's political world, but also reflect the spiritual and cultural tensions of the time. Merlin's vision highlights the interplay between the divine and the earthly, the profane and the sacred, the personal and the political, all crucial themes in Arthurian literature. In other stories, the dragon is an adversary to be defeated, a monster that terrorizes the kingdom and tests the valor of the knights. For instance, in the story of St. George, another character linked to Arthurian mythology, the dragon represents evil that must be defeated to protect the weak and vulnerable. St. George's fight against the dragon is a powerful symbol of courage and virtue, and his victory represents the triumph of justice over evil. However, not all dragons in Arthurian stories are enemies. Some dragons, such as the dragon of Avalon Island, are guardians of sacred places and holders of wisdom and knowledge. These dragons are often revered rather than feared, emphasizing the complex relationship between humans and dragons in these tales. In short, dragons in Arthurian stories are not simply monsters or symbols of power. They are complex and ambivalent creatures whose meaning changes depending on the context. Through their actions and interactions with humans, dragons reflect the aspirations, fears and conflicts of medieval society, offering a profound understanding of the world in which Arthur and his knights lived. Moving on, we delve into the relationship between the dragon and Christianity, examining how the figure of the dragon evolved in the context of the Christian faith. From a symbol of sin and temptation to a symbol of redemption and resurrection, the dragon has played a crucial role in Christian spirituality, profoundly influencing its iconography and theology. 2.4 The Figure of the Dragon in Christianity In Christian spirituality, mythological creatures often take on new meanings. Here, the mythical figure merges with the tenets of faith, and the dragon is no exception. The role of dragons in sacred texts and Christian legends is complex and ambivalent, often linked to evil and temptation but sometimes also associated with redemption and resurrection. In the Apocalypse of John, the dragon is a symbol of Satan, the divine antagonist. This powerful and terrible image of the dragon, a creature with seven heads, ten horns, and a tail capable of sweeping away the stars of heaven, is an embodiment of the dark forces that oppose God. The struggle between the Archangel Michael and the dragon, and the final victory of the angel, symbolizes the triumph of good over evil. However, not all representations of dragons in Christianity are so negative. Some texts and traditions portray the dragon in a more positive light. For instance, in the legend of Saint Margaret of Antioch, the saint is swallowed by a dragon, but manages to free herself by cutting open the monster's belly with a cross. In this tale, the dragon symbolizes the spiritual test to be overcome in order to obtain salvation. Furthermore, some interpretations see the dragon as a symbol of rebirth and resurrection, due to its association with the serpent, another recurring symbol in Christianity that represents death and rebirth. This connection highlights the duality of the dragon figure, a being that embodies both darkness and light, sin and redemption, death and resurrection. Overall, the figure of the dragon in Christianity is much more than just a monster. It is a symbol powerfully charged with meanings and associations, a reflection of the spiritual and moral tensions of the Christian faith. This connection to the dark and light forces of the cosmos makes the dragon a key figure in Christian iconography. Moving on to the next section, we will delve into one of the most famous dragon stories in Christianity, the legend of Saint George. The story of this holy knight who confronts and defeats a dragon to save a princess has become a powerful symbol of the triumph of good over evil, and has had a profound impact on the representation of dragons in Christianity and popular culture. 2.6 Dragons in the Icelandic Sagas Among the cold lands of Iceland, dragons find a place of honor in medieval iconography and literature. The Icelandic sagas, known for their richness of detail and intensity of storytelling, often present these majestic creatures as figures of great power and terror, Unlike in other cultural contexts, dragons are depicted here as beings endowed with intelligence and wisdom, 
sometimes even linguistic abilities. A significant example is the saga of Valsunga, in which Fafnir, a powerful warrior transformed into a dragon by a curse linked to greed, is placed at the center of the plot. Fafnir represents greed and corruption, but he is also a guardian, a keeper of treasures, a recurring figure in Norse mythology. Another well-known example is the Beowulf saga, in which the protagonist confronts a dragon in his last act of courage. Here, too, the dragon is a guardian, the keeper of an ancient treasure. In these stories, the dragon is not only a creature to be defeated, but also represents the challenge the hero must overcome, a test of strength, courage, and virtue. In these sagas, dragons do not necessarily represent absolute evil, as in the legend of St. George, but rather symbolize trials and difficulties that the heroes must face and overcome. They are imposing and dangerous figures, but also fascinating and mysterious. Heroes who face these dragons often find themselves struggling not only against a physical creature, but also against their inner demons. The dragon, in this way, becomes a symbol of inner conflict and personal growth. As we journey through the pages of the Icelandic sagas, we see how dragon legends are intertwined with a wider tradition of magic and mystery. This link between dragons and magic will take us into the next chapter of our exploration, where we examine how the dragon merges with the practices of witchcraft and alchemy. These associations offer an intriguing perspective on the figure of the dragon and its presence in the popular culture and beliefs of the medieval era. 2.7 The Dragon and Magic, Witchcraft and Alchemy In medieval culture, the dragon represents a powerful symbol that is significantly intertwined with magical practices. Draconic creatures are associated not only with witchcraft, but also with alchemy, a practice that attempts to transform common substances into gold and to discover the elixir of life. In the world of witchcraft, dragons are often seen as guardians of the secrets of earth and fire, two key elements in magical practice. They embody primordial strength and wisdom, attributes much sought after by practitioners of the magical arts. In many grimoires, ancient books of magic, one can find reference to spells and rituals involving the invocation of dragons or the use of parts of these creatures to enhance spells. Alchemy, which has deep roots in medieval culture, sees the dragon as a symbol of the transformation process. The Ouroboros, a dragon or serpent biting its tail, is an alchemical emblem symbolizing the cycle of life, death and rebirth, as well as the unity of all things. This symbol reflects the ultimate goal of alchemy, the attainment of perfection through transformation and purification. The figure of the dragon in stories of witchcraft and alchemy emphasizes the duality of this creature, on the one hand, they embody terror and chaos, but on the other, they symbolize wisdom, power and transformation. This duality is also reflected in magical and alchemical practices, which can be seen as forces of destruction or as tools for healing and renewal. In our journey through the medieval era, it is important to remember that the figure of the dragon was not only an object of terror and veneration, but was also an integral part of popular culture and the stories people told. In the next chapter, we will delve into the world of fairy tales and folk legends, where dragons assume prominent roles, continuing to enchant, frighten and amaze people with their actions and power. 2.8 Dragons in Fairy Tales and Folk Legends Shifting our attention from the high spheres of witchcraft and alchemy, we find the figure of the dragon in the everyday fabric of the stories that lulled childhood and adult life in the Middle Ages. These stories, which often serve to convey folk wisdom and morals, revolve around the figure of the dragon, resulting in fascinating and memorable plots. A recurring motif is the dragon as the guardian of inaccessible treasures or an obstacle to be overcome to achieve a valuable goal. These dragons are often vanquished by brave heroes who manage to prevail through cunning, strength or sheer luck. Perhaps the best-known example is the dragon of the Beowulf, whose death marks the climax of this Anglo-Saxon epic. Another frequent motif sees the dragon as the hero's antagonist, an enemy who embodies absolute evil. In these stories, the dragon is a monster to be defeated in order to restore peace and security to the community. However, it is important to note that in some stories, the dragon is not always evil, sometimes it can be a valuable ally or a master of wisdom. The figure of the dragon is deeply rooted in the folklore and legends of all cultures, 
taking on different meanings and characteristics depending on the context. Whether an adversary to be defeated, a guardian of treasures or a master of wisdom, the dragon lives on in the stories we tell, shaping our understanding of the world and reflecting our fears, hopes and aspirations. Despite the breadth and variety of stories in which dragons appear, these creatures remain constant in their role as powerful and mysterious beings, instilling fear and respect. In many ways, legends and fairy tales reflect our continuing fascination with these creatures and their enduring place in the collective imagination. As we continue our journey through the ages, we will further explore the image of the dragon in Eastern European cultures, where myths and legends about these creatures continue to be told and evolve. Dragon if you've been captivated by the mysterious world of dragons, make sure to smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on upcoming episodes. Want to uncover more legends and mysteries? Bell hit the notification bell so you won't miss the next chapter of our mythological journey.